All right, Alexander, let's answer the questions from the live street with Wyatt from Defense Politics Asia. Brula LLK says, hello, Privyat and Guten Tag from Switzerland. Sanjeva says, Wyatt, why does the Indonesian government vote against Russia and the UN? India, Sri Lanka being poor abstains. Why doesn't Indonesia abstain as well? Are Indonesians generally against Russia? Why why to answer that Wyatt question? Answer that. Yeah. Black tie, thank you for that super sticker. NGS says about time this meeting between realistic minded people took place. The analysis from both from you both are so important for citizens of Western countries. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, A.R. Francis, thank you for that super chat. Yamabushi170 says, how do Western powers cope with their cognitive dissonance when they simultaneously, simultaneously beat a war drum against China while also being consistently defeated over and over in their own war game exercises? We, we, we discussed that. We discussed that during the program. Um, um, and uh, why it did wonder about exercises. In fact, we have had exercises. We've had war games, to be more precise, less than exercises, and you're absolutely correct. The war games have always consistently shown China winning. And this is a problem, and it's scaring the Pentagon. But for the moment, what it's doing is it's making the Pentagon even more determined to focus its energies on creating forces that can defeat China. Valerian Winterdrake says, if I understood news correctly, post-German leopards were destroyed by Russians driving Chinese washing machines firing Iranian hypersonic shovels. You, you're absolutely correct, yeah. And uh, Not Banned Account says, what terms of surrender will be imposed on Russia? I think, I think we dealt with that in the program. I, I love Not Banned Account, actually. Yeah, I like, I like Not Banned Account's yeah. questions as well. Yeah. Um, very good questions. Mark Morris says hypersonic shovels. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Paul Walker says, when will Russia take out deep sea communications and satellites? Well, I think uh, Wyatt answered that. It's not in their interest to do it, so they won't. Uh, Claudia, thank you for that super sticker. Uh, Ivan Gertzid says, in the uh, 13th century, Alexander Nevsky said, those that come to us with depleted uranium by enriched shall perish. Well, it's, uh, I think it's actually from the film rather than from the actual, what he actually said that, uh, it, but in the film, the Eisenstein film, he says, those who come to us with a sword will, will perish by the sword. But anyway, there we go. <laughs> of course, it's, a, it's, it's taking it from the Bible, because that's what Christ says to Peter when Peter cuts off the ear of the uh, officer sent to arrest him. Pierre 66 says, where is DPA and why it based? He sounds Singaporean. Great analysis. Yes, he is, he is, in, Singapore. He is in Singapore. Yeah. Th Thought Crime says, in your opinion, what do you think the actual casualties for Ukraine and Russia, and Russia are? KIA wounded in a war of attrition. This is the only figure that really matters. Wyatt, Wyatt says that he doesn't know. Uh, I, I'm going to say it's in the hundreds of thousands now. Pierre 66 says Singapore is a very capable military. Do you think they will remain neutral if war breaks out in the South China Sea? Taiwan, China, won't the USA require Singapore to be an ally? Wyatt, Wyatt, Wyatt has answered that, answered that question. Jason says, can Wyatt explain how he came to be interested in analyzing this conflict? He answered that I question answer too. That. Uh, Lada Moreau says, feelings are not the source of data. Fortunately, one-to-one -one casualties is nonsense considering that one side has air and artillery advantage over another. He conceded the point. When he says that he assumes one-to-one -one casualties, he does that as a way of not really thinking about casualties because he doesn't trust the numbers. But, I mean, he, he accepts implicitly that Ukraine is suffering many more casualties than Russia is. Tim Gibson, thank you for that super sticker. Elza says, Alensky, the king of beggars. Klaus Vatnes says, are, the functioning back ch are there functioning back channels between the U.S. and Russia? I answered that during the live stream. No. Yeah. Yeah. Sanjeva says, I think there is an element of disorganization and inefficiencies in the Russian military still, hence the inability to take 
towns like Marinka and Avdevka. It's better than in the 2008 Georgian conflict, but still a lot to fix. Well, there are definitely things to fix, and Putin was talking about this with the war correspondents. But about Marinka, at least, I've come to the conclusion that the Russians did in Marinka exactly what they did in Bakhmut. They used Marinka as a place to basically bleed the Ukrainians. They, they left them in control of a small part of this small town, and they caused the Ukrainians to overcommit and overinvest in defending it, and the result is that the Ukrainians have suffered enormous losses in the process. I, I think Avdevka is different. I think the Russians do want to capture Avdevka for political reasons discussed extensively in the program, but I think it's a difficult place to take. Well, yes, thank you for that super sticker. Joyce Skorupa, thank you for that super sticker. Cactus Ray, thank you for that super sticker. Sancheva says, Wyatt, Zelensky is handled by the State Department plus U.S. civil society. You see this in many regimes, changed countries. Guaido did the same, even giving a speech to Congress. He is trained and told what to do. He is rewarded for it. Yes, I, I mean, I basically agree with that, actually. And I think Wyatt touched on his uh, views about it during the program. Klaus Vatnes says, point, where the Russian army? We only hear of Wagner. Now, he answered that. The Russian army's everywhere. <laughs> everywhere where Wagner isn't, which is in one place, Bachman. Yeah. Uh, Paul Walker says, who will pay for the rebuilding of Ukraine? He answered that too. Yeah. Sparky says, make Ukraine Russia again. Could easily happen. Klaus Vatnes says, Stoltenberg, Russia can't win because NATO needs to send strong message to China. This was also why the U.S. stopped the peace attempt in March 2022. Insane. Yes, it is insane. Rubia Powell says, old weapons and aircraft go to the same Ukraine graveyards where Maria Zakharova said the body snatchers are now legalized to snatch fresh organs. Archie, thank you for that super chat. Nicole Vance, thank you for that super sticker. Angel, thank you for that super sticker. Alexander, thank you for that super chat. David David says, Emperor Tsar talk is nonsense. I mean, he, he, why it responded to that, yeah. Uh, Russell Hall says, China will eventually maneuver to take Siberia. I, mean, I should say straight away, I don't believe this. And this is one area where I don't agree with Wyatt. I, I don't think that this issue of China and Russia as adversaries again is a real one. Certainly not for the time being. Sparky says, America leadership, come on Russia, don't you know we were just kidding around, we didn't mean it. Vlad the Sanctions Impaler says, I'm sponsoring the first coffee for Alex C and Alex M. After this stream is over, after the war, Russia will be happy to cover from back for China as Sergei Karaganov says, they will be happy to be number two. Yeah. A lot of people talking about his essay. So yes, I, I, I think it's an important essay to talk about, actually. Yeah. Um, Lada Moreau says, I will remind Wyatt that Putin visited Xi uh, during the Olympics in 2021. He, he Russia doesn't try to dominate China, but rather be an equal partner. He touched on that as well. Yeah. Alexander Grimsmo says, you guys do great work for truth. Strong borders make peaceful neighbors. Yes. Jay Galt says, the main purpose of the dam attack is a warning to China, Three Gorges Dam, just like Hiroshima and Nagasaki were a warning to the Soviets. Well, Wyatt uh, uh, responded to this and said that you know, he doesn't think that the two are analogous. Fabernak says, Sino-Russia split is the only way to stop de-dollarization. Yes, it's, it's too late now. 88th bus stop says, I think if Russia wasn't where it is, and aligned with China, the U.S. would blockade China's raw materials and energy sources by now. So Russia is not a junior partner. It's an asymmetric equal. I agree with that, by the way. And by the way, the talk about blockading China was being discussed in um, the neocon media at the time of the Obama administration. I mean, I remember reading these pieces and thinking, these people are truly dangerous and truly mad. Sanjeva, one of two. I also disagree with Wyatt's analysis of China-Russia relationships. Sergei Karaganov wrote an opinion piece and outlined the strategic relationship as symbiotic. 
Russia will be second, but will be fine. Rivalry is costly to China and will refrain more, more akin to a relationship between France and Britain in the late 19th century. Yes, I, I think I, I personally am more with Sanjay on this than I am with Wyatt. I think the Chinese and the Russians have sorted out their relations, actually. All right, I mean, the Russians maintain good relations with India and Vietnam. China has prickly relations with India, not I, optimal relations with Vietnam. I don't think these are important problems. Klaus Vatner says, Biden, I called Putin last week. He doesn't want to talk. Oh, wait, I called Rubin. Okay, I'll call Stalin next week. No, Rasputin. What's his name again? <laughs> Thank you for that. El Zoro says, your mate Christian sends greetings from Shanghai. Long live Emperors Xi and Putin. Thanks for that. Pa Pavlos Papayorio, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Alexander Grimsmo says, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Somalia, all were U.S. war crimes. We need people okaying wars. Sparky says, people ask, who will pay for the rebuilding of Ukraine? If Russia absorbs Ukraine, there'll be no Ukraine to rebuild because then it will be Russia. Yes, and Russia will rebuild it. That's the answer. And it can, by the Sparky way. Says, Sparky says, perhaps a silly thought, but does Zelensky remind you of the dream sequence on Gilligan's Island where Gilligan dreams he is a puppet dictator? <laughs> I haven't seen that one, so I can't, I can't comment. Yeah. David David says, China and Russia become partners when the USA... Invaded Iraq, became partners when you say invaded Iraq. Yes. Controlled Demolition says, thank you for your excellent work. You make my life better and my future brighter with your discussion. Thank you for that. And Elza says, so ironic, Bakhmut is of no strategic importance, but the abandoned villages in uh, Kherson, in, in Kherson region that are taken are a sign of Ukrainian victory. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I touched on this too. I mean, he says it was a win, but... Uh, uh, you're quite correct. I mean, the, the way the media in the West is running things is astonishing. Today, by the way, Daily Telegraph article, the title is uh, uh, Ukrainian failures are not Russian victories. <laughs> Try and make a sense of that one. And finally, Sparky says, people accuse Tucker of evoking anti-Jewish stereotypes for criticizing Zelensky, but Zelensky isn't Jewish because his mother wasn't. Even so, NATO propaganda uses the misconception to shield NAZIs. That's everything. Thank you, everybody, for the questions from our live stream with Wyatt from Defense Politics Asia.